Hi there, dear listener. Lazlo here with a quick pre-roll message for you. Before we get started, I want to let you know there are all kinds of convenient ways for you to support my efforts to bring you all these podcast shows on Chinese history, Chinese sayings, and tea history. If you go to my website at teacup.media and click the support button at the top, you'll find a bunch of ways to show some appreciation. There's Patreon, where you can get early access to new episodes, exclusive content, and an invite to the Teacup Media Discord channel, and more. CHP Premium, it also has early access, exclusive episodes, and ad-free versions of the entire CHP back catalog. Plus, there's several other ways to donate to the show as well. Check the episode show notes for a link to that very page. And my deepest thanks for listening and supporting me and my humble efforts. Hey everyone, Laszlo Montgomery again, here with another nice Chong Yu for your Chinese sayings collection. This one today goes back to the Tang Dynasty, late 7th century. This is another classic Chinese saying, or Chong Yu, that is, it's four characters long and strung together into some kind of meaningless phrase, Qing Jun Ru Wong, to invite the gentleman into the urn. Qing, in this case, means to invite. A jun is a gentleman. Ru means into or to enter. And a wang is a kind of an earthenware vase or urn. These can be very big. You could, you could fit a person inside one. Qing jun, ru wang. Invite gentlemen, enter vase. Dang, if there's no story behind these four characters, I'll eat my hat. Well, indeed there is, and it was told in the Song Dynasty. This Cheng Yu comes straight from the Zizhi Tongjian, the masterwork written by Sima Guang and a host of other scholars, working almost two decades to produce the most authoritative history of China going back to the earliest times. In English, it's often referred to as the comprehensive mirror in aid of governance. In 1084, it was presented to the Emperor Shenzong. There's a scroll in the Zizhi Tongjian called the Tangji, the Annals of Tang. And in scroll number 121, there's the story about a gentleman named Zhou Xing. He was like a Kang Sheng kind of a character. I covered Kang Sheng in an old China history podcast episode. He was Chairman Mao's chief of secret police at one time and a very hated and despised person from CCP history. A lot of people were falsely accused and suffered terribly at Kang Sheng's hands. He was thrown out of the party posthumously. Back in the Tang Dynasty, there was Zhou Xing. His boss was none other than the only empress in all the thousands of years of Chinese history to rule in her own name as the emperor of a dynasty. There were plenty of empress dowagers and regents, but no one, not even the empress dowager Cixi, could say they ruled and held the official top spot in the imperial government. Only one person had bragging rights to that claim to fame, and that was the Empress Wu Zetian. Our story takes place in the year 691. The year previous, Wu Zetian had set up her 15-year Zhou dynasty. It lasted until her death in 705. Since the entirety of this dynasty consisted only of herself, Wu Zetian's Zhou dynasty gets air quotes around the word dynasty. Wu Zetian was covered in another ancient podcast episode, so I won't go into details here. But suffice to say, she had to step over a lot of dead bodies to get to where she ultimately ended up. She was ruthless and stopped at nothing to get what she wanted. When she finally had neutralized all her enemies, she still maintained a very effective and feared secret police. Well, what secret police isn't feared? And her guy was one of the true villains of Chinese history. Not very well known, but this police chief, Lai Junchen, had a well-earned reputation for extracting confessions from accused criminals. In fact, once you were put into one of his torture chambers, whether you committed the crime or were just being falsely accused, everyone confessed. Even though she had killed practically everyone who could possibly be a threat to her. Wu Zetian sat uneasily on her throne in beautiful Chang'an. There were more rumors flying around Chang'an about who was making a move against who. Well, one day someone told someone that they heard from someone that Zhou Xing, the police chief, had been in cahoots with the turncoat general Qiu Shenji. 
General Cho had been recently executed for plotting against Wu Zetian. Well, Empress Wu called Lai Jun Chen to the palace and said she heard Zhou Xing was up to something and to go investigate and interrogate him. Zhou Xing was another secret police official, and he worked under Lai Jun Chen and had also developed quite a terrifying reputation for his 100% conviction record and his ways of extracting confessions. His reputation was well-earned, and there were plenty of stories about all these innocent people who were wrongly convicted and brutally executed at the hands of Zhou Xing. So Lai Jun Chen invites Zhou Xing to the palace for a lunch and some vino, and Zhou Xing and Lai Jun Chen, of course, knew each other and were already good buds. While they're engaged and they're drinking, Lai Jun Chen casually says to Zhou Xing, I gotta tell you, man, I've been having the damnedest time trying to extract confessions from some of these accused. I try everything, and sometimes they still refuse. People say you're the master. What's, what's your tried and true method of getting people to talk? So Zhou Xing answered, the urn. This one never fails. I get a big urn, and I heat it with white coals on four sides. But first, before I light the fires, I stick the accused inside the urn. And as soon as it heats up enough, uh, they're screaming out their confessions. Then I execute them. Lai Jun Chen said, brilliant. I never thought of that. Then he calls out to some of his underlings and demands an urn be brought out and to get a fire going, as Zhou Xing described. Zhou Xing was wondering, what's going on here? And Lai Jun Chen said, you know, Lao Zhou, uh, Empress Wu heard from one of her peoples that you were conspiring with Chiu Shen Jin against the state. Zhou Xing said, you know, this is preposterous and just, you know, wild comments made by his enemies. He totally denied everything. So Lai Chun Chen said to Zhou Xing, okay, then in that case, please get inside this urn. Well, Zhou Xing knew right away where this was heading. Lai Chun Chen was using Zhou Xing's gruesome interrogation methods against him. And now the tables were turned and he was being forced to suffer the same torture he inflicted on others. Or as we say, he was getting a taste of his own medicine. Well, Zhou Xing threw himself on the ground before Lai Jun Chen and kowtowed furiously, confessing to everything and admitting his guilt. And Lai Jun Chen had him remanded over to the authorities and dutifully reported his findings to Wu Zetian. The empress must have been having a good day because she considered Zhou Xing's past loyalty to her and being there at key times as she was clawing her way to the top. So she didn't call for his execution. She banished him instead. So his life was ruined, and as he began making his way to his place of exile, leaving the splendid life of Chang'an behind, word had gotten out, of course, and many of his enemies were lying in wait for him. When they found him, they made fast work of Zhou Xing and killed him. So Lai Jun Chen was giving Zhou Xing a taste of his own medicine by inviting the gentleman into the urn. The same method of torture that Zhou Xing often used against those he dealt with. So when you say, Qing Jun Ru Wang, it means someone is suffering the same grisly fate using the method that he had reserved for someone else, or to fall into one's own trap, so to speak. Qing Jun Ru Wang, a classic. Lai Jun Chen, by the way, he too got caught up in a scandal and ended up getting executed. And if you think people hated Zhou Xing, get a load of what they did to Lai Jun Chen. After he met his end, it said some of his enemies, which he had plenty, ripped apart his body and ate his flesh and ripped out his organs. Yikes! On that note, I will leave you. This is Laszlo Montgomery signing off from sunny and beautiful L.A., California. Check out the China History Podcast and the China Vintage Hour. All available at teacup.media. Chinese culture, all the time. Until the next time, mes amis, I hope you'll keep coming back for more here at the Chinese Sayings Podcast.